gonna let, you're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let me down You're never gonna let, you're never gonna let Let's declare this Do the technical bit first. We're on. Hello. It's so lovely to be here. It's like coming home. It's great. Um, so I'm hoping that I read the email right um, and that I'm talking about the Lord's Prayer this morning because um, that's what I'm talking about. So if I didn't read the email right, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'd like actually to start with uh, a video this morning. It's a piece of spoken word and I found it incredibly Powerful, And as you watch it, um, if you think about that first line of the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, this is who we pray to. Before fluorescent formations ever fomented the foundations of your firmament, that is, before the stars in your sky ever entered existence, before the light knew what bright meant, before the sky had a clue where up went, before either were ever invented, I am. Before terrestrial perennials terraced your planet's territorial terrain, that is, before the plants in your ground were ever ordained, before roots were ever arranged, before fruit had a taste, before either had a name, I am. Before the ocean had a bowl, before the surf discovered its role, before the grave was made sheol, before man had a soul, I am. Before Eden was installed, before the garden serpent crawled, before the tree, before the fall, I am. For I am truth, before there ever could be false, I am perfection, before there ever could be faults, I am. By all, in all, through all, all, in all, and I am to be called, I am. Before the curse usurped the ground and drove you away from the divine. Before you felt this separation between who you are and the intention of your design. Before you tried to abide in sources of death in order to find life. Before you combined yourself with any form of pleasure you could find. Before you felt so alone, before you felt so dry. Before you tried to run away from my side, I am, I am the vine. Before the cherubim ever guarded the garden Before the flaming sword was ever sharpened Before that chasm between God and man was ever widened Before you lost all hope in becoming a citizen of heaven Before all you earned was endless flame Before all you deserved was righteous pain Before you were a sheep hoping not just to be some lion's prey Before you were a lost lamb longing for a pen Longing to escape your fate I am, I am the gate 
Before sustenance turned to gluttony and food became an enemy Before attraction was based on anatomy and sex was removed from matrimony Before money became morality and greed grew into the only causality Before you were empty without me Before you tried to satisfy your appetite with anything Before you strive to feel alive By filling your strife with the fleeting vices of your fleshly devices Before your hunger for relief left pangs in your side I am, I am the bread of life Before you became acquainted with pain and death Before you ever tasted loneliness Before disease destroyed what you possess Before eyes could go blind Before ears could go deaf Before you lost the one you love To the grave's unyielding cleft I am For before mankind stopped living So that they might just survive I am the resurrection and the life Before that sadness that grips your mind Led you to darkness and thoughts of suicide Before that distortion of man hurt you So that you now hurt yourself Before you knew razors and wrists could create a new hell Before those wounds turned to scars And those scars became a way of life I am, I am the light For before you even knew how to sin I am where your salvation begins For before you withdrew from the path of my way before you willfully and joyously disobeyed before you betrayed the gift that I gave of that breath in your lungs that life in your airways by saying no to my love and yes to your heresy before you engaged with the enemy waged in sin with intensity before you deranged my supremacy inflamed my jealousy before you chose greed over my adequacy lies over my accuracy pride over my advocacy before Before you chose your sinful self over me I am, I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep For before you were a spotted lamb I am For I am the way before you could ever run away from my call I am the truth before you could ever walk away from my law I am the life before you could ever turn away from my cross at Golgotha's skull So I beg you now to Withdraw, withdraw from your sin for I am your only temptation Withdraw from yourself for I am making you a new creation Withdraw from your pride for I am ruining your reputation Withdraw from your self-righteousness for I am your only mediation Withdraw from your hopes and dreams for I am your only expectation Withdraw from your life for I am your crucifixion For before all time I am all sufficient Before all titles and designations To my name alone did the cosmos listen For I am Jesus, I am the Word, I am Elohim, I am the Lord, I am the Christ, I am Messiah, I am Creator, I am Jehovah Jireh. I'm the Lamb of God, I am Emmanuel, I'm the begotten Son, I am the Holy One of Israel. I am the first fruits, I am the Prince of Peace, I am the Bridegroom, I am the King of Kings. I'm the God of Abraham, I'm the God of Jacob, I am the Alpha, I am the Omega, I'm the Holy One worthy of praise. So withdraw into my side, withdraw and be made mine, withdraw and with me stay, withdraw into my way. I just sit down. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you might feel a little bit shortchanged. But um, it's awesome, isn't it? Um, if you ch- search into YouTube, uh, I am, you'll get that and others as well, which are amazing. Um, the Lord's Prayer is a difficult one, actually, because it's so familiar. And we, sadly, we recite it on high days and holidays, which is awful. It's such an insipid way to treat such a powerful prayer. Um, and, uh, yeah, should we just pray? Um, Chris started this morning with Isaiah 55, which I've just totally lost. (laughs) And um, where have you gone? There you are. And it struck me that there was an invitation. 
is anyone thirsty, come and drink. And then it goes on. But then verse 3 really struck me. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. Lord, I pray that we would come to you this morning with our ears wide open. And that we, that we would find that life that you offer us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I thought I'd um, start by asking us the question, who do we pray to? When we come in prayer, do we come to the I am? To the God we've just heard described, the God of the cosmos, who created, created out of chaos. He who dwells inside and presides with us in the darkest and most joyful of moments in our lives. He who has overcome the world. The, Lord, try again. the Lord's Prayer is the most widely known example of a set prayer. Set prayers are formal, written prayers, often memorised so that they can be recited both publicly and privately. When I read this definition, I thought, what a sad and insipid definition of the Lord's Prayer. Um, don't get me wrong, I think memorising scripture is really important. I think that liturgy has its place. And actually, um, I had the privilege of listening to Sir, Sir Terry Waite talk about his time in captivity. And he reflected on um, the, the power of re remembering those prayers and those liturgies that he'd spoken so many times and that that kept him um, sane, as he put it. Um, so that gave me a new perspective um, and, a, and respect for such liturgy. But there's some, and there's something quite profound about when we engage with liturgy and set prayers because they can't been said down the ages and we, um, we kind of join with the saints in that. Um, and that's just amazing. Um, when I started looking at the Lord's Prayer, just preparing uh, for this, um, it is so much more, and I think if I can get any message across, go and sit, look at it with fresh eyes today. Look at it with that daily bread idea that you can't store it up and you can't um, uh, yesterday. You can't use yesterday's. You know, it's fresh. Look at it with fresh eyes. Um, first of all, in Luke's account, the disciples ask um, Jesus how to pray. That's the sort of context of it. Um, they don't ask him how to heal or cast out demons, or perform miracles, which I thought was really interesting. Why is that? John Mark Comer, who's rapidly become one of my favourite YouTube listening um, preachers, um, he talks about this idea of apprenticing to Jesus. What did the disciples see Jesus do the most? He withdrew to pray. He withdrew and spent time with his father um, and from that place he then ministered. And I guess there's probably a bit of curiosity about what Jesus did when he went away over there. But also there was a recognition that out of that there were miracles, there were lives changed. Um, and so there was an understanding that from that place comes the miracle. Who am I addressing? We start with our Father and we've just listened to that wonderful um, spoken word about how powerful I am is. That is who we say our Father to. Um, and I wonder perhaps the question who do we pray to is perhaps the wrong one. Um, or maybe there is another question and we need to say who do we pray with. Because Jesus invites us as our brother to pray with our Father. Our Father points to a relationship not a distant relationship where worshippers were fearful, fearful to stand in God's presence or even to say his name. Through Jesus, we are invited to, into the Holy of Holies, no longer hidden to be protected from God's overwhelming power, but we're invited into an intimate relationship based profoundly on love. It's an invitation to come close. Sometimes our idea of God can be a little bit mixed up. I've had bad experiences 
or good experiences. I once heard someone speak and say that actually we shouldn't label our experiences bad or good. They're not moral, they're just experiences. Some we like better and some we like less. Um, and prayer is an invitation to share those experiences with God. Um, in this world, we often limit God or we dismiss, perhaps the world dismisses God as a power, powerless breaker of promises. If God is good, why? Dot, dot, dot. But as Jesus, as Jesus invites us into prayer this morning, he also warns us in his word about the challenges of this world. And I'm sure John 16, 33 is probably not everyone's favourite verse in the Bible. It says this, In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. We don't like the trouble bit, but... Um, just before that, it says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And again, it just points to that relationship. And that's how we walk through the difficult times. Sometimes life is horribly difficult. But we can say with confidence that God turns all things for good according to his purposes. And we look forward to that hope because he has overcome Jesus demonstrates to us in the Garden of Gethsemane how to face crippling anxiety in the face of this world's troubles. He knew what he had to face in order to overcome. He was so distressed, he sweat blood. His antidote to his anxiety was prayer, conversation with God. God is capable of hearing our greatest pain we don't have to do a magic wand god and say, it's all right, we'll just make it nice and fluffy. This hurts, this sucks, but God is good and God is with me. I was with a friend yesterday who has walked through an almost impossible week where there was a potential she would lose her daughter and her granddaughter in, in the birth process. And she, I sat with her yesterday and she said, for the first time ever, I think I got what Jesus meant by take this cup away from me. I am very glad to say that there was a miracle this week and both are here and doing well. But Jesus was present in the pain. We then get to say who art in heaven once we've said our Father, we get to say who art in heaven. Our Father is set apart. It's not about distance. Um, God is as close as the air in your lungs. We breathe Yahweh. He is the breath in our lungs. Genesis 2.7 says he breathed life into the man and he became a living person. John Mark Homer, as I've already said, is a bit, bit of a favourite of the minute. One of his prayers is this. Father, I set you apart in my heart and my mind as holy, special, unique, no parallel, beautiful, good and true. And I set you apart as the emotional source of my well-being. God is set apart. We then get to say, hallowed be your name. This line is worship, pure and simple. It's sitting in. It's declaring, it's meditating on the awesomeness of God. Think about the picture of heaven in Revelation. The angels have been worshipping since before time began and they haven't got past the word holy. No one's running around in busyness. They're just simply focused on the one, declaring holy, holy, holy. Hallowed be your name. This line is about positioning. As we worship, we orientate ourselves. Um, just like when you start a walk, you get your map out. I don't know what I've done with it. I brought one to, here we go, just to remind us. You get your map out. I love, I, oops, throwing it all about now. 
I love walking, a lot of you know that. Um, but if you get out the car and you've got your map up the wrong way and you don't know whether it's that way or that way and you haven't orientated things, you're in for a really long walk. You're, not, you're going to totally miss the mark and, um, and it's going to be hard work. And so actually, if we just orientate ourselves with God, our walk is so much easier to navigate. And that's what this line is about. Your kingdom come. The New Living Translation says, may your kingdom come soon. And my answer to that is, yes, please, Lord. We don't have time this morning to look at the depth of what God's kingdom looks like. So perhaps in my former profession as a teacher, I might set you some homework. Go and check out the, the book of Revelation and other places that mention what the kingdom of God is. But I'll give you a little quick clue. It cries, holy, holy, holy. Just, uh, yeah. That's better. <clears throat> Totally lost myself. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Proverbs 3, 5 says, Trust in the Lord. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. Um, the other day I was at the house of prayer and um, uh, there was a, a gentleman visiting, preaching and um, I went and asked for prayer afterwards because um, he was talking about um, sort of what, what life looks like and um, uh, things have been a bit complicated I guess in my life in the last couple of years I got made redundant and trying to work out what the next step is is sometimes a bit tricky and, um, and he, he's just shared this verse with me um, Proverbs 3 5 and um, and he said, you know, actually, if you want God's um, will to be done in your life, if you want to know what the next step is, just acknowledge God in the morning. Acknowledge him in that, those things, and he'll show you what to do then that next step. And it might not be that I know what to do in three years' time, or two years' time, or next month, but he'll show me what to do tomorrow, or today. Um, and, and that just, it really spoke to me. And, um, and, and I've, I've tried to do that in the last sort of month or so since that. And, um, and, and uh, yes, it's, it's true. God is sifting out. Um, I had a picture the other day of, uh, of you know, those giant garden sieves. Um, and it felt like the last couple of years had been full of earth and, and it was sifting through and the good stuff was coming out and um, things were starting to... Um, I don't know, clarify, I suppose, about where, where I need to step out next. So, yeah, just acknowledging God in that kingdom come, inviting his kingdom uh, to come. Well, whizzing through time. Um, give us our daily bread. There's a sense of freshness about this. Um, it's daily. Daily really struck me. I, um, and... Uh, you know, we, we think back to the, the story in the wilderness where the manna, you know, you could only collect for that day because yesterday's was gone off and tomorrow's hadn't come yet. And I think sometimes uh, being a, um, a fixer and a planner, um, I like to know what the story is and what I'm doing. And actually, the last couple of years, it's been really good to learn to take those daily steps um, with, with God. What struck me also is that actually we're quite a long way through the prayer before we get to asking for once. We've acknowledged who we are. We've recognised the awesomeness of God. We've recognised our relationship status. Try again. Relationship status. There we go. Um, with who we pray with in line with bringing God's kingdom on earth, only then do we think about our needs. I think so often my prayer life goes like this in the morning, Lord, can you bless dot, 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 heal dot, 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 provide dot, 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 and I'm off out the door. Now, there's a time and a place for a quick fire prayer, um, and sometimes there's situations that, that need that, but I think the Lord's prayer is so much more than something to be recited 
I think it's wise to pause and to use it as a, a model for prayer, as a way of praying rather than a prayer in itself, if that makes sense. The next few lines all contain reference to us. Give us our food, forgive us our sins, lead us, us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one. There's a sense of corporate, there's a sense of family about this. It's not just about me, sorry. <laughs> um, so it reminds us that, that my prayer can't be for me alone. If I pray for provision, it must also to be bless, to bless others. We see the gospel in this. Forgiveness isn't only for me. God's deliverance isn't selfish. It isn't for me alone, but all are invited to Jesus, by Jesus, sorry, through Jesus, to dine at the table with the Father. There are so many more things I could have mined from this scripture and I could have talked at you all day, but 20 minutes has already whizzed by, so. But I encourage you to go back with fresh eyes and see this prayer as something new, something that you can use as a model, as a formula, if you like, um, for prayer. For something to aid you. It's not just a prayer for high days and holidays. It's a model for prayer that can be practiced every day. It's a prayer that invites us to stand in our true identity as children of God, siblings of Jesus. It's a prayer that speaks of the awesomeness and the wonder of God. It's a prayer that speaks of our call to worship him in spirit and truth. It's a prayer that speaks of the wonder of the gospel and its invitation through Jesus and the beauty of the Trinity to be fed, set free and delivered from death into eternal life. Can I encourage you this morning to try praying with the Lord's Prayer? Worship team, do you want to come back up? Shall we just stand together, if you're able? Let's just pray. Father God, we just want to praise you. We thank you for your awesomeness. We thank you for that you sent your son so that we can have that true relationship with you, that we can call you our father. This morning, Lord, I just pray that you'd stir in our hearts that, that need for that daily bread, that want for that daily bread. Lord, would you, you just fall on us now? Holy Spirit, would you just come and minister to our hearts to recognise I am? Just to dwell in your presence. I don't know where you, what your journey of life has been, but perhaps for some people this morning, that our father is a challenge because earthly fathers sometimes get it wrong, earthly mothers sometimes get it wrong, or human beings. And maybe you need to come and sit with our I am and just receive some healing. Feel free to come and be prayed for. Maybe you need to appreciate that you're a king's kid. A friend of mine um, prayed that over me the other day and said, you need to know that you belong to Jesus. You are a king's kid. If you need some prayer for that, just come forward. Or maybe you've never heard the gospel before. You've never heard that invitation. The invitation to the table is there for you. 
Jesus, as your brother, comes and invites you to meet with the Father. Just come and grab someone. Probably someone down the front, but it doesn't really matter. And we can pray with you. We can talk a bit more about that. If you're someone who needs fresh manna this morning, grab someone for prayer. Just be blessed. Don't leave without encountering and engaging with the I am we've heard about this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, team.
step I take seems to bruise me. I hear the enemy. He must be close by. My feet are giving in. Your love surrounds me, wipes away wounds, lets me breathe.